Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, April 23rd. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. That's not all. There's someone fabulous here that we love. I'm all excited because Latanya Richardson Jackson is Ooh. here from To Kill a Mockingbird. So good in the show. We love you know, it. I've been so digging so deep in Mockingbird with those the videos right, we've been our putting out. Series, the series Citizens, Citizens of, of Mockingbird. And, and hers is amazing, by the way. You have to mm-hmm. watch hers. But, or you can watch Beth interview her in just a few minutes. <laughs> True. <laughs> we will do that right after our top five. Congratulations are in order for the newly announced nominees. Yes, so it's award season, and uh, the oh, outer critic circle. We've never really figured out what the outer critic circle is. I don't know what is. their outer. I don't know what's. It's inner. a circle of people that are out there, <laughs> um, and they've announced their, their nominations. And uh, the 69th annual and Hades Town got a lot, 12 nominations, which is interesting because they honor off Broadway. So normally Hades Town would not be eligible, but they decided that mm-hmm. it was changed enough. I don't since the off Broadway, you're an expert in Hades Town. Is that true? Yeah, the producers fought because it was so different from but is it off true? Broadway. I don't care what the producers said. Yeah, you're it's, a fan. I, did they change it enough? They did. It's, it's very different. It's changed very a lot. The book itself is different. The songs are pretty. Similar. Okay, so they got 12 nominations. Tootsie got 10. Tootsie's opening tonight Happy on the Broadway. To and uh, Oklahoma got six. Anyway, winners will be announced May 13th. Go look on the site and see all the uh, nominees. nominees. Congratulations. And this new play was announced for a second extension. It hasn't even opened yet. This is good news. You have more time to see James Graham's Inc. at Manhattan Theater Club I'm at the Samuel Friedman Theater. Good. So Good. That's my review. So good. So Broadway.com. Uh, this starts Johnny Lee quotable. Miller. Not that quotable. So good. <laughs> so good. Uh, good. And Bertie Carvel. <laughs> it, it looks at the infancy of Rupert Murdoch's media empire. Mm-hmm. And it's especially about when he bought the British tabloid The Sun mm-hmm. and its editor, Larry Lamb. Uh, Johnny Lee Miller is the lead, plays Larry Lamb. Anyway, it was announced to run through June 9th. And now it will close on June 23rd. So a little more time. Cool. And these two are staying at the diner for a little bit longer. Speaking of extensions, uh, Shoshana Bean and Jeremy Jordan, two new musical daddy. theater favorites, new daddy Jeremy Jordan. They uh, are currently in Waitress, as we've discussed, I feel like, daily Every on, day. on yes. this Every show. Day. And they were supposed to leave May 12th. And you know what? They're having a good time. They're staying until June 2nd. Uh, you know who they are. I don't need to tell you. Just go see them. They're at the Brooks Atkinson. And we are surviving on this news. This is a lot. Are you ready? (laughs) Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, Mm -hmm. is prepping a Broadway-aimed Destiny's Child bio-musical. Okay. Okay. Music World Entertainment has announced the new stage production. It's the evolution of Destiny's Child. I'm not going to tell you who Destiny's Child is, because if you don't know, I don't know what's going Uh on. Uh, Told through the eyes of Matthew Knowles, who was also uh, the co-creator and manager of the group. So, it's called Survivor. Colon. Colon, the Destiny's Child musical. <laughs> I was waiting for you to help me out with that. Um, and we'll play Houston, the group's home base, in 2020. No venues, no dates, but they're no saying casting, no book writer Broadway yet. Broadway They're bound. saying Broadway aimed. Um, yeah, so there you go. I don't know if the score will feature Destiny's Child music. It looks like it mm-hmm. might. And for Bootylicious. And Bootylicious Bill, 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 on Bill's Broadway. Bill's needs to be somewhere. 100%. You want any other things you want to vote for? <laughs> Say anything my name. Have, they don't Say have my a, name. They don't have a book writer. <laughs> anything else you want to hum along? We, so it's just at the very beginning of it. So we'll, we'll find out. We'll but see. It sounds fun. Oops, they did it again. So speaking of musicals based on popular pop uh, song books, Britney Spears, you know, this is the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's this uh, musical, Once, Up, Once Upon a One More Time. That's which, how you have to say it. Which is currently, they're doing uh, works. Like right now, I think on 42nd Street, there's a Broadway cast rehearsing. They're, do, they're mm-hmm. like working on it right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, this musical is supposed to happen in Chicago, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Starting October fall. 29th. But now Sony Pictures already bought the movie rights, which is interesting. So we haven't even seen the musical. And the movie rights uh, are snatched up. And we'll see what happens. They said it's going to be a Mamma Mia. I think they compared it to Mamma Mia in the news mm-hmm. story. Um, in Once Upon a One More Time, Cinderella, <laughs> Snow White, and other fairy tale princesses gather for their book club when a we rogue fairy godmother drops the feminine mystique into their corseted lap, spurring a royal revelation. That's a really fun concept. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious to see what this is. Very anyway, high um, so yeah, it's going to be eventually on Broadway, probably, and in the movie theaters. All That's right. it. I want to get to uh, yeah, Tanya Richardson Jackson. Well, wait, be- what else is on the site, though? Before we get to that. Yeah. 
Citizens of Mockingbird today, Mr. Gideon Glick, Gideon Glick who we, who our we beloved adore, vlogger, Dill, Dill himself. Dill, what's the Dill with and Gideon And tomorrow, Glick? by the way, is the final with uh, Jeff Daniels. Yes, the finale. That, that's tomorrow's um, video. All my sons opened last night, so we have photos and uh, lots of photos. We've got photos yeah, of, yeah. of all my sons. We've got the um, opening night video. We have behind the scenes video of Gary's opening night celebration. Special exclusive video. Look, yeah. Watch it very closely. Very Sleep closely. Thought. There's a lot to see. <laughs> there's a lot to see there. Uh, there's a new episode of Sarah Styles vlog uh, uh -huh. for Tootsie. Yeah. And she sits down with Julie Halston. It's a very sweet episode. Okay. Please watch it. Uh, we have Fresh Face for uh, Be More Chill, Stephanie Shu. Yep. And happy opening to Tootsie. Yes, We've got happy opening to Tootsie. Photos, Dorothy Michaels Beemore. and Michael Dorsey, both on and Broadway. And Santino Fontana. <laughs> Thank okay, you, Paul. I'm out. I'm out. He's out. Uh, Caitlin, will you please introduce our guest? Gladly. Yes, we have the Latanya Richardson Jackson here with us in the studio. She's uh, currently, she can be seen as Copernia and To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway. She earned a Tony nomination for her role in A Raisin in the Sun and made her Broadway debut in Joe Turner's Come and Gone. Her extensive screen career includes The Civil War, 100 Center Street, Blue Bloods, Grey's Anatomy, and a whole lot more. Follow her on social media at ltjackson underscore. Make sure you get that underscore in there. And leave all of your questions in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Miss Latanya and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hi, Latanya. Hi, Beth. Hi, Caitlin. I am so happy you're here with us. It's an honor and a thrill to talk to you. It's an honor to always talk to oh, you. Oh, I love this woman so much. Can you tell them a Latanya Richardson Jackson super fan? Oh, God. How are things going over there at the Schubert Theater? Oh, everything is, you know, we don't have room to receive all of the graciousness that is being bestowed on our play. There's, like, so much abundance of everything over there including people well it's a huge hit sold out hit what was your first feeling when you were called about this role hmm do you want to go and play the maid um you know that book it it it, it used calpurnia in a way that you know was not necessarily memorable so I wasn't sure that it was something that, you know, I was going to drop everything because, you know, this was an all-consuming project a uh, year in the making. So I wasn't so sure about that until I spoke to the powers that be, and that was Bart Sher, who's a dear friend, and Scott Rudin, who's like our everything. Your director um, and your producer. Yes. Uh, about what the idea, I didn't know Aaron. Sorkin, and, mm -hmm. but you know, of course, we, we know his work. What the idea was for Calpurnia's agency in the film. I mean, in the film. In I'm the all, play. I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the play. <laughs> and so, what convinced you to take this role on? That they would, that she would have agency. That's what I'm saying. That yeah. he he uh, assured me that this was something that he was going to do creatively with her because he didn't want her to be scenery either, and he held true to what he said. In in some ways, she's parallel to Atticus Finch in the in the way that she's a role model for the children in the play, and she's a pillar of decency. Do you think that's the case? Um, I'm not, I don't, you know, it all sort of melds together about what exactly she is. She was trying to fill a role of um, nurturer and parent, you know, de facto, because she had been friends. She was third generation in, in that household. So she was there before Atticus was there. And she's trying to make sure that what those kids' parents, I mean the mother, what the mother wanted done and the grandparents expected was being done. And since she knew all of them, she's, I think that we have tried to craft her. I've tried to craft her to be that, that thing, mm -hmm. that you know, sort of nurturing. I know you, you, you say role model. At the time, she would not have considered herself the role model, mm -hmm. but she surely would have considered that she was instrumental in building their moral compass. Mm -hmm. So what are you drawing from when you are building this character? My grandmother and all of the women of service whom I knew and whom I've read about and whom my heart just tells me 
that they were. And from what Harper Lee said, mm -hmm. she gave much kudos to Calpurnia in the book. It's just that she didn't, she couldn't allow her at the time, I don't think, the agency that Aaron has given her. All right, let's take a step away from Calpurnia and go back to you. You are a theater nerd from way back when. What made you want to be an actor? You know, I thought I was going to be a doctor. And then when I was 15 years old, I was in a play called Trifles by Susan Glaspell, thanks to a great woman of theater in Atlanta who's passed on, Georgia Allen, Broadway actress Georgia Allen. And um, she took me to the Atlanta University Center where I saw Camelot. Really? I was so in love with that play and that musical that, you know, I said, oh, God, I want to do this. So the summer, there's a ch they had a children's theater. She put me in children's theater, and the rest was history. I was smitten. But you know what we always tell, and I tell the students that I teach sometimes, I said, you know, it, if it's there, it finds you. I don't know necessarily if you find it. Uh, I'm sure that that was the role for many, but for me, it found me or it was always there and it just opens up because this is not this is a very unnatural thing that we're doing here you know <laughs> you so, mean eight shows a week yeah no well that's <laughs> crazy but that's just crazy town but i mean acting when you think about what acting actually is it's a very unnatural thing to to choose as a vocation you see what i'm saying I so do. i think that it it has to be inside of you somewhere to do you, to prompt you. It's like when people say that children find the mothers and you know parents to be born to. I think that acting finds you to act through. Now, of course, we have to mention your husband, Samuel L. Jackson. Do we? Well, we don't. <laughs> Except no, we do. I want to ask you, you've both been on Broadway. Obviously, you have both have your Hollywood careers. Do you want to work with him on the stage? You know, I wouldn't mind it. We started out that way in Atlanta, Georgia, at Spelman and Morehouse and Atlanta University Players. Um, we started out that way, so I wouldn't mind it. I just, you know, I'm not that hyped on being in a film with him again <laughs> because that's just too disparaging. You know, disparaging. The the yeah, it is because I am like one place and he's somewhere else. On a movie set, they're, they're, you know, the status of the star is really the status of the star. And, it, and, really? so and you the feel hierarchy it. bugs you. Oh no, yeah. Totally. I mean, you have that in the theater, but somehow, you know, the theater, we're all in there together. It's, you know, we're all working together toward the common goal. You've mm -hmm. called it a blue collar job being on stage. No, I said I'm a blue collar oh, actor. What, what does that I mean? I didn't say, I, oh, I, to you. I'm what not trying to disparage the, the position of blue collar. <laughs> no, I'm just no, saying, hard -working. there are, hard -working. yes, the, they are the worker bee actors, the worker workers, then there are the stars, and then there are the, you know, supporting stars. And I just always consider myself a blue collar actor. You know, I'm just there, I'm working. So if you were to do a play with your husband, what play would you want to do? I have no idea. I'm just going to throw this out there for you. Okay. And then we're going to take your questions because I know there are a lot. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Everybody always says because that. Because they're married and, you know, Because Liz we've been Taylor. married so long. <laughs> You've been married a very long time, which we've is unusual so for Hollywood. So... Everybody, Kenny Leon tried to, you know, Kenny, Kenny Leon tried to get that through. I don't think the estate wants that, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But my God, how volatile would that be? Well, that's the play. <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we take your questions, tell me what your memories are from *A Raisin in the Sun*, because you came in at the last oh, minute. Man. Diane Carroll uh, dropped out, and you came in and got a Tony nomination and gave a gorgeous, layered performance. You know, Denzel and Denzel Washington, Sophie Okonedo, and Anika Noni Rose, Kenny Leon, they held me up because it was a lot of pages, 147. See, I, I know exactly how many, 147 pages, and she's off that stage very little. Mm -hmm. So my memory is first that, you know, of, of saying, really, I'm going to do this? I came, I was in New York just doing something else, and I never left, you know? I stayed here and I, I did the play. So my memory of it, uh, Emmanuel Eisenberg told me I, I, I need to write that on the resume of my heart, mm. and I think I have, because it was, it was an experience and a time and an opportunity that for me 
changed my life. It changed my life in such a good way. And I had never really thought about a Tony. I thought about an Oscar. I never really <laughs> thought about a Tony and all of that. I just loved the theater. You know, we weren't Broadway. I, I just loved the theater when I was here. You know, we, we were used to being downtown and, you know, and everywhere. So that was out of left field and threw me. And then the rigor of what's involved in it, that was a pretty heady time. So I have great memories of the opportunity that was afforded me, and I think that it was like manna from heaven, mm -hmm. that I will always hold it in the resume of my heart. I love that. And this is a very different experience for you. We worked through this. I've been with this a year, so we, and we've we're not been done working. Yet. Not at and all. we're not done yet because we've got six and a half, seven more months. Yeah. Something like that. Amazing. All right, we're going to take your questions. Yes. I know there are a lot of we them. We got questions. Oh, we yeah. got questions. We've got people watching. And we got people in. live. We got people watching. So, Jenny would like to know how do you get into character every night and how do you get ready to bring Calpurnia to the audience every day? Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth, Jenny. Yeah. Because you're going to see something if you go online with Dill. <laughs> <laughs> What's That's going to be totally ridiculous <laughs> about how I get. So just, I'm going to tell you the truth because you know that's like, that's farce what you're going to see. <laughs> um, I, you know, I get there earlier than mm -hmm. half hour and I first warm up on the stage and all of the ushers will tell you, I come in and I'm speaking to the ushers. It's like, hey, how we doing tonight? What is the temperature out here? It's freezing. So I get the lay of the land, what the room is reading. Then I do my vocal warm ups. Um, and then I do the floor mm. with stretches. Then I go to my room and I start talking. And I'm talking so that I can hear myself start to get really like, you know, down there so mm. so that I'm not up here with mm -hmm. it when I'm coding. So mm -hmm. um, I'm down here so, you know, I can start talking. So I start talking to Dagan and, you know, and Phyllis, we're on the same floor. Oh, okay. and all of us just start chatting. And basically, that's all I do. And, you know, I warm up from there. By the time I we get to the stage, Diana Sands, the great look, Diana her Sands. Up, look her up. Look her up, people. Uh, told me to always start counting backwards. Oh. from 100 wow. and to gain your focus and then that's what I do and that's basically it but for me going to the stage before the show is everything mm -hmm. I I I have to like meet that room every day I love wow. that I love that so Maggie wants to know what has this you know you said you've been doing this for a year already how what has this experience meant to you personally so far you know I, I I'm, I'm all dug in mm -hmm. um I wanted to make sure that Calpurnia had the agency that not only that that Erin had given her, but that she was filled with enough blood and guts inside mm -hmm. her that the three dimensions she had to walk around in was something that people was were going to remember. So that's what I did, and that's what it is. I love that. Cool. This will be our last question. So Kate wants to know, what is it like working with this awesome company of actors and creative team? And what's it, what's it like backstage for you guys? Um, you know, we cry a lot. We could, you know, it, it took us a long time to, to get through that play without crying. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's such a company that for those of you who haven't seen the play, you've read the book, so you know the N-word is just totally infused through, throughout it. And the situation itself is so deep that the integrity of everybody involved mm. has to be such that you can trust them. And working in this company has such a level of trust that it's my joy. We never come in there. We may be tired or, you know, okay, here we go. This is number what <laughs> show we're, we've got this week. But we feed into each other and we hold on to each other and we get through it because there is such a respect and love in that company that I have never experienced. And I've experienced great times, like I said, in Raisin, 
it was there, but somehow because we had all of this workshop to do, we're, we're just intertwined and backstage, you can tell it's a family. It really, really is a family. I love that. What are some reactions you've had from audience members or friends who have come to see the show? You know, everybody wants to talk about the tears, you know, because I cried, I cried, I cried. I said, okay, well, did we get the message? Mm -hmm. um, they love Calpurnia and, and, and are shocked by it most of the time, but they say, but you know, I can't now see Atticus existing without Calpurnia because, mm -hmm. you know, on a par, they're like yin and yang. It's the give and take, and somehow we end up making it work. So you hear a lot of that. You hear how great the kids are, that, you know, they weren't sure that they were going to be able to see the play with adults playing kids, and then they said, and, you know, you go and you sit down and you're, like, saying that, and before you know it, you're not even thinking oh, because as soon as they come on, you're done, you know. Yeah. They're, they're baking that thing. <laughs> so a lot of that. And then, of course, there's always, like I said, on um, – on our video, there are always the people who say, I had a Calpurnia. I feel for them too, though, because I understand exactly what they mean, exactly yeah. what they're saying. I make light of it sometimes when they tell me that, like, you had a Calpurnia, <laughs> really, really. But I get it, and I love that they love Calpurnia mm -hmm. because I love her too. Love oh, and we love you. Thank you for coming I love in. you, Beth. Oh. I love you, Caitlin. Oh. <laughs> I love, love Paul. Come too, back anytime. He left us. He did. Girls it's a room. little secret. Girls' uh, room. Caitlin, will you take us on out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today we are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to John Cameron Mitchell about his new podcast, Anthem.